So as a real estate agent, we all understand the importance of being a highly skilled sales professional. However, I think that a lot of us struggle with that. And the reason why I say that is when I look at the conversations that I'm having with agents that I coach, oftentimes the challenge is A, being consistent with lead generation, and then B, for the ones that are being consistent with lead generation, conversion. How do I convert these conversations into leads? And then how do I convert the leads into appointments? And then when I'm on a listing appointment, how do I present myself in a way that allows me to help more clients, to acquire and bring on more clients? And so that specifically has to do with the sales process, your sales skill. In this video, I want to talk about the, the one skill, the one mindset that the best salespeople in our industry all share in common that the, that truth be told, most of you do not have. And uh, I want to talk through that so that that can change as a result of this video. And hopefully that's fair. All right. And so what is the skill? I'm going to talk about the skill and then I'm going to break it down in great detail. The skill is the willingness or the mindset uh, to walk away. And so this all starts, this big idea starts with this mindset that most of us have which is one of scarcity. And because most of us approach our business with scarcity, we try and convert and sell and chase anybody or everybody that has the slightest uh, interest in buying or selling a home. I mean, this is where commission breath comes from. This is why if you were to Google realtors, we rank lower than attorneys when it comes to uh, the the trust and respect of that of the consumer. It's because of our behavior. It's because of our neediness that we come across so desperate for business that we're that we're literally every person we come in contact with, and maybe not you, but a lot of us, uh, we're just trying to. We, we think that we can sell and close everybody, and because we come across like that. Oftentimes, we put off prospects. And here's the big debate. The, the, the debate is which sales approach works best in a service-based industry like ours of, of, of real estate sales. There's one approach that says, well, we need to be um, aggressive and high pressure and close, 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 close. Okay, fine. And if you're going to buy into that, if you're going to use that approach, you're going to be met with a lot of resistance because there's something that psychologists call psychological reactance that if you take that approach with people, I mean, the reality is, listen, people know when they're trying to be, when, when, they're, when they're being sold. You can feel it. And that then is met with high levels of reactance or resistance and it shows up in the form of pushback and objections and uh, confrontation. And so that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is by having a willingness to, to walk away and the prospect feels it. Now, let's talk about that for a second. First, if, we, if, you, if you buy into this idea that, listen, I just can't help everybody. I'm not the best agent for everybody. Not everybody needs my help. I think all of those are reasonable. I don't think those are ridiculous uh, versus going into everything like, I'm going to try to sell and close every single person that I talk to. It's impossible, number one. And number two, I think you're going to lose more business than you're going to gain. But the first thing that we have to look at is, okay, I'm looking for a perfect fit versus trying to convince everyone I talk to to be my client. I'm looking for a perfect fit. Can I help this person? Do they need help? Do they value my expertise versus trying to help everybody? Let's talk about it. The reason for that is this. If you have a mindset of, I am going to try to convince and close everybody, you will end up with business that you absolutely resent. You'll end up with clients that you absolutely don't like. You'll end up with uh, clients that when they call you, you cringe. That is not on them. That is on you. That is on you with your neediness, your desperation for business, and you just taking on everything that you possibly can so that all you get are the scraps. You get what other agents that have a willingness to walk away 
have done exactly that, walked away from. That's why you end up with the overpriced, under-motivated sellers. That's how it works. And so if you look at your business right now and you're working with buyers who've been searching for homes for four and a half years and sellers that uh, re- refuse to have flexible uh, showing schedules, overpriced, under motivation, it's because most likely a professional has decided to walk away from that business and that's why you ended up with it. That's the first takeaway. Number two, when you take this approach of this willingness to walk away and the prospect knows it, this helps the prospects feel more relaxed. Versus them having to be defensive because nobody wants to be sold, right? Yourself included. So when you take the approach that I don't need your business, Mr. or Mrs. Client, I would like your business. And if it makes sense, aka a fit, then we can talk about potentially working together, but I don't need it. In other words, if we end this meeting today and you decide to hire somebody else, that's perfectly okay. And when you take that approach, the prospect can relax. They don't have to put their walls up. They don't have to resist. And most importantly, when you do this, you allow prospects to be honest with you. And that's what we're looking for. Number three, when you take this approach, this allows you or positions you as a professional expert versus a needy salesperson desperate for money. And isn't that how you want to be seen? In other words, let me give you a great example. This is this is great, right? So when you um, when you call the dentist or will you call the doctor's office to make an appointment? You see, if they 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 don't they don't operate or behave like most real estate agents do, right? They say, well, here's when you here's when we can get you in. And you do exactly what they uh, allow you to do. You're going to fit their schedule. You're going to go see them. You're going to move your whole world around in order to go and see this expert doctor, this expert dentist. It's not the other way around. And what also happens is they're not going to chase you. They are not going to chase you because they built a, a practice in such a way where they have people seeking them out versus the one having to chase people down. So when you have a position that you don't need anything, that you're going to succeed no matter what, that you are successful already, that you have a full plate of clients already, and you take that position, you can build a perception that positions you as that expert versus you coming across as super desperate, super needy. I'll do whatever it takes, I'll, uh, whatever price you want. I'll discount my commission to nothing. I'll give you a foot rub after every showing. Just please give me this listing. That's a very difficult position to be in to to reach the levels of success that I think you want. And then let's talk about selectivity. You see, most of us, if we're being honest, are we have a mindset that the prospect is the one who gets to make the decision whether or not you work together. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. Because you and the prospect are actual equals. Whether you know it, believe it, or understand that as a separate conversation, but you two are equals in that both of you bring something to the table. Here's what I know. Most of the time, here's the the bottom line truth. I believe that you actually bring more to the table than a prospect has to offer you. Here's why I say this. How many listings will be uh, sold in your marketplace? I don't know, a couple thousand? How many of you are there in your market? Oh, that's right, one. So which one is actually more rare, more scarce, harder to get? You or the listing? And I think the problem is we forget that and we flip-flop that and we give up all the power to the prospect. We end up being the puppet to the puppet master. We believe we have to go to a listing appointment or to a buyer consultation and put on this dog and pony show while the prospect gets to sit back and say, ah, jump a little bit higher over here. What about this? What about that? Well, thank you so much. Now I'm going to go and uh, uh, interview some other puppets and I will let you know if we decide to hire you. 
And how do we respond? Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. You know, when should I expect to hear back from you? When would you like me to follow up? And we give all the power to make a decision whether or not we're going to work together all in the prospect's hands. Well, what am I suggesting to do different? That we make the decision as to whether or not we do business a mutual decision. Because what did I say at the beginning of this conversation? We have to make it clear to the prospect that we don't need their business. That in fact, if we're going to work together, it's going to be because both of us believe that there's equal value. There's an equal exchange of value. And this is where you have to have the willingness sometimes to walk away. You have to be the willingness to say no. You have to have the willingness to be more selective. You have to have the willingness that you're interviewing the client or the prospect rather as much as he or she is interviewing you. And when you can do this, magic happens. You actually become more attractive to the prospect, not less. Not less because Let's face it, how often are you leaving a listing presentation where the prospect prospect is saying, well, I need to think it over? And if you're being honest, you probably say, damn, all the time. And if that's the case, you're coming across in a way where you are the commodity, where the prospect gets to make all the, sh- they call all the shots, they make all the decisions, and it's them deciding on what they will or will not do, which tells us that we are, in fact, coming across with desperation. So I want you to just think about these things as you move forward in your business, that you have have the right to say no. You have the right to stick up for yourself to to, to make this world with, with people in which we serve equals. You don't have to be walked all over in this business, working seven days a week, 80 hours a week, you know, jumping up to everybody's, uh, 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 you know, every time somebody calls you Christmas Eve or not Christmas day or not, you don't have to operate that way. And oftentimes it's us behaving that way, which results in prospects treating us as the commodity that we say we don't want to, to, uh, we say we don't want to be treated that way, but it's yet us behaving that way that causes people to treat us that way.